It's a great night, and I'm so excited tonight because we have John Karoff and Mike Peterson. Both are back with us in the studio, which uh, is a big reason to celebrate, especially when uh, I'm hosting uh, tonight uh, the stars of the Garner Elementary School, Buford Garner Elementary School in North Liberty. On my left side is Amy Nielsen and her three wonderful kids. Uh, Jelly in the center and Ben and Katie. And on the left side of Katie is the most important leader of the school, Mindy Paulson. Uh, Mindy, I would like you, uh, I would like to welcome you here on behalf of our audience, on behalf of uh, Mr. John Karoff, Mike Peterson, Mr. Doug Cheney, and Su Jen, who are helping us in the studio here, the cameras. And on behalf of our audience, who are gonna be watching you on Channel 21 and Channel 18 and YouTube and Blip TV. We are everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I would like you to give us uh, a little bit history uh, about the school and when it opened and, and okay. who is Mr. Garner. All right. Well, we're, we're glad to be here and this is a great representation of the Garner families that we have. And come next month, we will have finished our second year at Garner. We're in North Liberty, Iowa, and we have about 460 students this year. And we are named after Buford Garner, who was a former superintendent for the Iowa City School District. He was a principal at City High from 1950 to 1952, and he was superintendent from 1952 to 1969. And a couple of interesting things about the changes that were happening in the district while he was the superintendent, the student enrollment went from 2,500 students to 8,855 students during his tenure as superintendent. And he helped build um, eight schools that are still functioning as schools today in the district. It was Hoover, Twain, Lucas, Lemmy, Horn, Wood, Southeast Junior High, and West High. So when we think about the changes that the district sees now, it was kind of reflected back in the um, 50s and 60s too when Mr. Garner was the superintendent. We have a great partnership with the City of North Liberty. They participated in funding the gym, so we have a double-sized gym, which is awesome for PE classes, and the Recreation Center uses that gym on weekends and evenings for basketball and various um, other activities. And then they also run our before and after school program. So we're very um, pleased with the partnership that we have and that provides a great uh, community resource center too for people to come in and enjoy the facility. Um, Mrs. Garner is still living and lives in Iowa City and celebrated her 94th birthday just last week. 
And so every once in a while when we have music performances and those kinds of things going on, she and her daughter try to attend as many as they can and the kids like seeing her. Um, we all made birthday cards for her and Mrs. Garner arranged for one of the first grade classrooms to have pen pals with um, some of her friends out in the facility where she lives then. Um, so that's been a, a great connection to do too. And do you expect the number of uh, students to increase next year? Uh -huh. Based on um, where we, we are at with kindergartners right now, we had kindergarten roundup last week and we are um, approaching the 85 student mark for kindergartners. And if you've, anybody's been driving around North Liberty, you can see all the building that's going on. Just even right across the street from us, there are more and more homes being built. And so um, North Liberty is, continues to grow and so I anticipate that we'll continue to have families walk in our door and be looking for a place to educate their kids. A couple of months ago, I read that uh, U.S. Uh, report, uh, U.S. News, and uh, that uh, North Liberty is one of the fastest growing mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. and so, of course, this uh, has its impact on you the bet it does, right? education right. process. Right. Yeah. I and tell the teachers that's job security. So and, and your kids go to uh, junior high, w which school? North Central Junior High okay. and then West High. And West High mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amy, you have something to tell us tonight, to tell our audience. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, Garner Elementary is the f uh, first elementary school in Johnson County to introduce um, the walking school bus program. Um, which is a way to get kids active and get them um, out of cars, off of, off of school buses, and um, walking to and from school. And uh, it, it, you said that uh, uh, this is the first time in Johnson County, right? Yes. But so this kind of project or this kind of plan is implemented somewhere else in other uh, uh, let us say states or other yes. cities? Yes, there are. Um, um, I think there are three or four other other schools in the state of Iowa that also offer the walking school bus program. But we we are the first in Johnson County. So what, what do you see the positive uh, effect of this project? Uh, the positive uh, for us would be getting um, cars off the streets, um, decreasing traffic around our school, um, getting the kids outside and active before school, helping wake them up, giving them a little bit of extra social time um, every day, and then um, and just 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 being outside and being being active. The kids need 60 minutes a day of activity, and with our walking school bus, we're able to give them about 40 of those 60 minutes. And how many parents are involved? Uh, we Project. we probably have roughly between 12 and 16 parent no, volunteers. That's a good a good number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really very impressive. Yes, but we and, have a hundred. And Katie, are, are you are you riding this bus? Yes. <laughs> so tell me something about it. You know, what what, what do you see as positive? Um, I think it's a good way to get everybody walking to school now, because some people live far away and don't usually walk. So, so the physical the physical exercise that you do, you see as one of the uh, advantage of having this project, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what else? Mm -hmm. When you're walking, you're talking, right? Mm -hmm. You're exchanging, uh, you're making friends, right? Yeah. And uh, you, you probably have better relationship with your parents when you walk with them than when you are sitting in the car, right? Yes. Do you have to get up early every day, earlier than usual, to have this walk? Only Wednesdays. Okay, uh, I will ask you a, a difficult question here, Ben. You tell me, when it's cold and blizzard and snowing, and what do you do? Hmm. We usually drive. You usually drive. So you give the bus uh, a little break, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we are uh, we're, we're really pleased to have uh, Nick um, with us tonight. Uh, and Nick, I would like you to look at the camera and talk to our audience who you are and tell them about your project. Well, uh, my name is Nick Sobosinski and I'm the Safe Routes to School Program Director with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. 
um, and we work to get more kids walking and biking to school on a regular basis. So whether that's through education and encouragement programs like the walking school bus or the other side of it is, is you know, getting those sidewalks built and the crosswalks and, and the signage up to make the kids safe as they're walking to and from school. And uh, uh, how many kids are involved in this project? Uh, well, we work statewide, and this, but this, uh, the project at Garner was really the first one that we've really dedicated in Johnson County, um, or in Eastern Iowa, actually. We, so we've worked across the state, but the first time really working at home, so to speak. We're based out of Coralville, so it was nice to, to work on a project that was, that was close to home. And uh, I, is it a good chance for you as a supervisor or a trainer to teach them something about safety and about how to protect themselves? Yeah, you like helmets and all. you bet. Yeah, especially with the walking program, we're trying to foster those lifelong behaviors in kids. Um, teach them how to cross the street um, to make them safe pedestrians as they as they grow up, um, but hopefully safer drivers too, because they'll be more aware of uh, kids on the road when you know when they get behind the wheel as well, and maybe they'll even continue walking or riding a bike as a as a lifestyle rather than hopping into the car quite as frequently. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the situation in, uh, in North Liberty uh, for being a quieter, uh, it's not Iowa City, you know. <laughs> uh, it's safe for kids to ride their uh, bikes, right? Safer. Yeah, yeah one would think. Uh, we actually had uh, some unique hurdles um, at Garner in particular because half of the, the school comes from this, the area west of Highway 965, which is obviously a huge barrier for those kids. Um, they've got to cross a four-lane highway, um, and there are crosswalks and things like that, but, but that didn't negate all of the, the parent concerns and, and even some of the safety concerns the kids had about trying to navigate across that big, uh, big highway to, to get to school. So that was a, a huge hurdle that you really don't see in Iowa City, which is a much more urban setting um, where you kind of get some of that uh, rural flavor, uh, I guess, out in North Liberty and having to cross the, the highway, which is what a lot of kids uh, in smaller communities in Iowa have to face. I've seen yesterday in the paper that this uh, person is designing a bike for the whole family. Have you seen this? <laughs> it's amazing, like uh, the mother and the dad and the kids all in one bike. Yeah, the all the, using the same bike. It's really interesting, and uh, I think it's somewhere in Iowa here. Huh. You'd like to have one of those, uh, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's very impressive. To, uh, now, where are we going from here at at Garner School? What are the plans for the future? Sure. Right now, this year, we we introduced the program um, just after spring break. We're walking one day a week um, Wednesdays. And you know, from here, we just would like to add more days. We, we, we pretty much reach all of our students. We have four different routes that are walked every Wednesday. So we just need to get some more uh, parent volunteers, some more community members to come and help us um, supervise the children. And then we can expand to more days. Uh, let, me, let me hear. Katie, uh, do you have any suggestions to make this project uh, better, maybe? No, not really. Uh, you are fifth grader now? Or? Sixth. You are six, so you are leaving school. Mm. Uh, how about you, Ben? You're going to be the leader now after Katie leaves? Yes. <laughs> are you ready for that? No. No? Why not? I don't know. Okay, I would like you, the two of you, to tell me in the future what would you like to be. I want to see how kids from Garner School think. It's very important for me to listen and to tell our audience how you are going to uh, design your future. What would you like to be, Ben? Hmm. Have you thought about it or not yet? No, no? I haven't. Okay, Katie. Um, I want to be an artist when I grow up. Oh, wow, this is impressive. <laughs> and uh, do you have, uh, okay, support? You have the green light from parents about that. <laughs> it's all right to be an artist? Absolutely. Right. That's, that's really wonderful. It's nice to hear that because when I was young, I always say this story. When I was young, my parents really didn't want to be an artist. They didn't want me to be an artist at all. They wanted me to be a doctor, engineer, pilot, you name it. And I ended up being something else and ended up, after all that, take the whole circle back to Earth again. <laughs> so 
heart uh, wins. And uh, <laughs> I encourage you to do that. That is very impressive. Nick, where are we going from here with your project? Uh, hopefully more schools in, uh, locally and more schools across the state. Get, uh, we want more kids walking and biking rather than sitting in the car and really just enjoying being outside and picking up that active lifestyle. And are you, are you working with a grant? I mean, you have enough support financially to, to do this? Uh, yep, I uh, currently work under uh, the Federal Safe Routes to School grant um, for the Iowa Bicycle Coalition, but we've got a few more years of that, and hopefully that'll be a program that'll continue to be around in the future. That's wonderful. Are there other things going on in your school that uh, you want to tell me about? Um, yeah. We have a running club. Um, every recess, um, every Tuesday and Thursday recess, we go out and run. Oh, tell me about this a little more. It's like a, a contest? Um, I don't think it's really a contest. Everybody gets a card, and every time you finish a lap, you get a stamp, and you try and build up to get a bunch of cards. But I don't think it's really like a big competition. Uh, and when, uh, how did you, how did you decide about this? Uh, it is great to be a gator. Tell me what, is, what does this mean? What, what's a gator? A gator. Yeah. What, 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 what does it mean? Yeah, I'm one of the audience who don't understand what's a gator. Huh? The gator's our school mascot, and the kids actually um, picked that. But right before the school opened, they had, I think, three choices, and all of the children who were going to Garner got to vote on what they wanted the school mascot to be, what the school colors would be, and they chose gators. So it's, it's because of the name or just because they like gators? I guess they just liked the way Garner Gator sounded. Oh, so <laughs> it rhymes. Yeah, <laughs> nice alliteration. Yeah. What does it mean to be a gator? What are some of the things that you, that it means? Respectful and the responsible. Mm -hmm. Respectful and responsible. Those are two R's. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's wonderful. And and I I heard that you have uh, uh, another uh, project that Patrick Snyder is uh, mm -hmm. supervising. Tell me a little bit about it. Yes, um, our one of our um, fifth sixth grade teachers, um, Patrick Snyder. Um, it, it decided that it would be a good idea for us to um, start a school garden. Um, he just recently came in front of him to the PTO and it was approved and so hopefully we'll be uh, groundbreaking early next month. Um, some, we, have, we have a patch of land out by our school, we'll make some raised beds, hopefully we'll get it fenced in and it's a great way to take um, learning out of the classroom, show kids where their food comes kind from. Of, kind of practical hand on mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, uh, and I think, uh, I think, uh, I don't know how many schools in Iowa here do this kind of uh, hand-on work outdoors in the field, you know. I know that uh, Tate High uh, in the east side of town here, uh, they have a project where the kids plant their own fruit mm -hmm. and their own vegetables and uh, they have a harvest day, which is a real celebration. Mm -hmm. I would like you to uh, maybe, uh, as, a, as a parent and activist in the, in the community, talk to people at uh, uh, Tate High. They have a lot of experience of having their own garden, and maybe Patrick can make a connection yes. with, uh, with uh, Mark Jensen and Ben, uh, and, and, and they can uh, really benefit a lot from this. And kids do the, the thing, yeah, they, they, they water the plants, they take care of them and everything. Mm -hmm. That's fun. So what's PE for? I mean, uh, every time I go to your website, there is PE for. PE for life? Yeah. Um, it's a grant that our, um, our, our school was awarded, um, a way to help keep our kids active. Um, I think that there's a couple of different programs that our PE director has implemented. One of the things um, being Family Fitness Night. We have two a year where um, families are invited to come and participate in different activities together. Um, it's really about blending um, the mind-body connection is, is uh, what our, our PE teacher is, is really all about, getting the whole family together and active. Yeah, this, this idea about uh, brain-body I think you have it too in your project because you know it's not only just uh, 
exercise or riding a bike, you know. Uh, uh, what do you think, uh, Katie, when I tell you, for instance, that if you have healthy lifestyle and you have body that's functioning right, you can think better and you can succeed more. Uh, do you agree with this notion or not? Yeah, I agree. You agree that a healthy lifestyle and fitness does affect the way we perform in school, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's why I was I was really intrigued when I read in your website, Nick, uh, this idea about uh, brain body coordination and how to uh, make things work together. It's not only to be physically fit, but to be thinking right in a positive way. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have other ideas uh, for the future? Now we are going to have more students. <laughs> You're going to do. Yeah, more students is the biggest one. And as as we get more kids walking, we'd like to see some some changes from local governments to make things more accessible. You know, in the planning and the transportation arenas, uh, whether it be more sidewalks or more crosswalks. Look at the camera here and and uh, face uh, the. Uh, people who are in charge <laughs> and tell them what you need because it's, it's, it's your forum now. If they escape from 21, they will find you on YouTube. <laughs> so tell us what do you need from the city and from the officials here. Well, we, the, the biggest thing we can do is get a really strong parent champion like we have in Amy, someone at, at, that, at that ground level to to be, be, the, be the activist for these things and, and get the programs going, these inexpensive programs. And from there, we want to see some change, you know, the city making changes to, to accommodate more kids walking and more kids biking. And whether that's putting in bike paths uh, where they don't exist or bike lanes on the street or, or sidewalks where they don't exist, those things aren't all over the place. And we'd really like to see them in a lot more places. Uh, I, I hope uh, you would get uh, a positive response about that. And, uh, <laughs> and I would like to invite our leader again to come and, and tell, us, tell us what's your, what's your uh, vision about the future now. Now you are going to have, uh, I, I didn't ask you about diversity because I know it's about 70% about of, uh, of your kids are uh, the majority. Uh, here, I mean, you don't have too many minority kids there. Right. We are m mostly um, Caucasian. We have a, a small population of African American and um, Hispanic families that attend Garner, too. Our attendance area is um, the Cedar Springs housing development and then just right around our school and then like Nick said over on the other side of 965 also then. So I think one of the reasons um, Garner appealed to Nick is that most of our kids are within walking distance of the school and um, we are able to, um, these two guys have been able to coordinate all the routes and make everything work really well. So it's been nice to see the kids get involved in that and get really excited about it, so. Do you have any uh, request? You see Nick uh, had a list of things. Oh my gosh. Do you have any request from our <laughs> community for support? <laughs> You know, I, I must say, having been in Iowa City before I moved up to North Liberty, I, both communities have just been very supportive of education and stuff. And, and having just had Roundup last week, I think it's the time of year where you always think about, you know, just encouraging parents to do the right things for their kids so the kids are ready to come to school, making sure that you're limiting TV and video games and getting outside and exercising and reading with your family and doing all of those things that are gonna make our kids ready to learn because we have awesome teachers at Garner and in Iowa City and, and when we have kids that are ready to learn, it's, you know, there's nothing stopping us. And, and the whole uh, philosophy of Iowa City education is student center. You right? bet. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. uh, these are the people that we put all the emphasis on. Right. Yep. Yep. They're worth it. So we enjoy working with our kids every day. And, and like I said, when parents send us kids that are ready to work, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, uh, as far as uh, the support of uh, the North Liberty uh, community, 
mm-hmm. through your efforts. Mm-hmm. You you are the baby school in in, in this whole uh, We are, yes. Area, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Penn is just up the street one way and Van Allen is just down the street the other way. And then so there's North Bend at, at Clear Creek so in North Liberty. So we need more Amy's there, right? <laughs> I, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. I And I know there are lots of Amy's out there at all the schools in Iowa City and North Liberty too, but when we ha- when you have a couple of Amy's at your school, when you're a principal, it's awesome. And the teachers too and, um, acknowledge that we have a great PTO. You know, we've got two playgrounds in on both sides of the building already, having just, you know, like I said, just coming up to our second year over. So, you know, that didn't happen without a lot of hard work too. So we, we have a great supportive PTO between playgrounds, helping us buy more smart boards for our classrooms, doing projects like the walking school bus. It's really it's really a team effort from everybody in North Liberty and, and um, the, the kids are gonna benefit from that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this was a great uh, program. We're very happy to have uh, Jelly and Ben and Katie as our stars tonight. I need a smile. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a beautiful <laughs> one. And thank you, Nick, for uh, coming. And thank you, Amy, for all the efforts you're doing. <laughs> of course, we appreciate everything you're doing, uh, Mandy, uh, for the school and for our community mm-hmm. in general. And this program is going to be on uh, the educational channel, which is channel 21. Uh, the education channel. Uh, the, you have to watch the listing. Okay. Uh, because most of the time, uh, it is after uh, the rerun of the board meeting, mm-hmm. uh, and so we we can we can be twice a day. As a matter of fact, you know, last week uh, I saw myself maybe ten times, so <laughs> <laughs> so it it can happen a lot. Uh, on on channel 18, which is our host here, they they provide us with all the service, and we have to thank uh, Josh uh, and Emily and Jared and all the team here, of course, Mr. Cheney and Su Jen for all the studio uh, service and everything. And they show our uh, program here on uh, weekends uh, uh, at, at one o'clock, Saturday and Sunday, as a matter of fact, at least it is listed at Media Commons, Sunday at one o'clock. Uh, other weekdays at 5 uh, p.m. So, uh, or the opposite, let me see, yeah. So anyway, but uh, uh, the most important thing that we are on uh, YouTube, uh, the, the whole program, you can see it. And uh, I think uh, our people here send it, uh, it's within 24 hours, maybe 45, 48 hours, you will see it on YouTube and on uh, blip.tv. Okay. Thank you again, it's been a pleasure, and uh, go Gators! Yes. <laughs> <laughs>